And we are very excited to be joined by the great one, Wayne Gretzky, who joins us on the telephone. Welcome to CBS Sports HQ, Wayne. Pleasure. Uh, great to be here and uh, enjoying the summertime right now. Yeah, Wayne's in Idaho, by the way, uh, where he goes in the summertime and uh, is getting ready to go and uh, watch his grandson play some hockey. So let's get you in and out quickly here, Wayne. I want to start just by asking you about the top pick in the NHL draft two days ago, Connor Bedard, who was, yep. uh, I mean, that no-brainer pick for Chicago. Well, for you, what is it that makes Bedard's game so special? Yeah, well, listen, uh, first of all, it's a honor to get drafted in the NHL and uh, to be the first pick overall is something special. This, uh, what's impressed me most about him is ma his maturity off the ice uh, as for an 18-year-old. Uh, he carries himself extremely well and he speaks uh, very, very intelligently for an 18-year-old young man. He's still just a kid, you know, and he's in the limelight and he's been under the microscope in Canada since probably 14 years old. And so he's handled himself with a great deal of uh, dignity. Um, as far as the hockey goes, I think that one thing that separates him from a lot of the other younger players who are coming into the game is his uh, tremendous hockey sense. Um, his ability to see the ice, see open players, get around guys, get through guys. Uh, he has a tremendously quick release. You know, he's just he's a special, unique player, and Every so often that happens in, in our game, you know, it happened when Bobby Orr came in and Mario Lemieux came in and then, you know, Crosby came in, Ovechkin, uh, and then, of course, David and Austin Matthews. So all these guys have lived up to their billings, and here we are again uh, years later with another special young player, protege, that uh, has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Um, a city that's really excited about having him, and I think that uh, he's going to have a tremendous career. He's just a really mature young man. Wayne, you were a guy who came into the league in 1979. Things were just a little bit different back then. Your critics thought you might struggle with the size and skill of the league at that point, coming in from the WHA. Obviously, a different view than the pressure that's on Bedard as he comes in. You spoke about it, so I wanted to ask you, what advice would you have for a kid like him who, who is still a teenager as he enters the league as the face of a franchise? Well, like Gordie Howe taught me when I was a kid, um, listen, you got to love the game. Uh, you got to learn each and every day, and you got to respect the, the game itself. And he does that. He's very mature for 18. And then on top of that, it's up to the organization to put people around him. You know, listen, the Blackhawks had a great run there. They won three cups in 10 years. Um, and here we are uh, years later, and Bedard's going in. Um, and, and, you know, he's just really special. Um, and it's up to the Hawks, too, to have people around him that are going to fulfill his dreams. And they've made some trades. They've got a couple talented players that they've traded for with some experience, and I think that's going to take a lot of pressure off of him. So I think he's going to be fine right there where he is in Chicago. Another Connor, uh, Connor McDavid, joined you in the record books this week as the fifth player to win the Hart Trophy as the league's MVP for the third time in his first eight seasons in the NHL. He's the first player uh, since you in 86-87 to lead the league in goals, assists, and points. But a Stanley Cup title uh, continues to elude him and the Oilers. Uh, how close are the Oilers for you, Wayne, to making that deep run? And, I mean, are they going to need to do it soon if they hope to keep him in Edmonton? Well, listen, he, I know he loves playing in Edmonton and loves playing in that arena. It's a special place. And I think Kenny Holland has done a nice job building players around him. Um, you know, I think if you look at the Oilers on paper, they're about as close to winning the Stanley Cup as you can come, uh, in a sense that a year ago Colorado beat them and they won the Stanley Cup. This year they were beat by Vegas Golden Knights and Vegas won the Stanley Cup. So I don't think they have to make a lot of wholesale changes, uh, maybe a few tweaks here and there, but I think they're really close. I think that of all the teams in the league, uh, that you could say next year could win the Stanley Cup. They definitely have to be in that group. Uh, if you're talking about who could win, and, um, they just, I think they're that close. So when you got the best player in the game, obviously that helps out a lot. One vote away from a unanimous vote. Uh, one of those uh, MVP voters had him fifth 
on that card. Uh, talk about teams that are adding players. The free agency begins Saturday. Ryan O'Reilly, Tyler Bertuzzi, uh, Blake Wheeler, uh, guys who have been uh, put on the free agent list. Is there a free agent out there who you would chase down? Oh, you know, I haven't had the time to really look at it um, strategically because I'm not involved, but um, obviously the guys you named, they're all pretty good uh, professionals. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly's proven to be a Stanley Cup winner, uh, tremendous team guy. So, yeah, listen, um, it's up to individual teams what they think they need, uh, which guy will fill that hole, that void for them. And then you got to worry about cap space. Uh there's a lot of guys, I'm sure the Oilers would love to sign as free agents, but the cap space is a big issue and makes it more difficult for every team to go out and just sign guys. And I mentioned free agency beginning on July 1st in the National Hockey League. All right, Wayne, one of the reasons why we have you here is because uh, you've partnered with Top Legends and Upper Deck on a new sports memorabilia venture called Value Notes. Uh, explain to us what it is and how do we get one? Well, it's really um, a lot like... Um, sort of a memorabilia hockey card, you know. Um, they've only made so many of them, and Yamar Yager has been a good friend of mine since uh, he came into the National Hockey League, and he partnered with a guy in Czechoslovakia, and then we partnered with Upper Deck Authenticated, and, you know, I'm the first uh, athlete to come out on this uh, particular uh, uh, possession, and uh, the next athlete is going to be y Usain Bolt, so they're going to go through, you know, different uh, sports, different athletes, different guys. I'm really excited for Yamar. He's just such a quality person. And at dinner yesterday, he's 50 years old, and he's talking about playing one more year in the, in professional hockey. And he's just a unique individual, and I'm just glad that I uh, can say we're friends. Yeah, I think the plan is to issue a one a year for over the course of seven years, Wayne Gretzky uh, being the very first one. Well, Wayne, I got to tell you, as a Canadian kid, uh, you're a guy who cost me a lot of money when I was growing up in Red Deer because I was a Flames fan. But it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you for joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Okay. Thank you. You have a great day. Cheers. Thanks very much, Wayne. In terms of upcoming dates, notable dates in the NHL, we mentioned free agency begins at noon Eastern time on Saturday. Then on the 20th of July, salary arbitration hearings uh, will begin. Then September 23rd, we can look forward to the Global Series as the NHL takes the game to Melbourne, Australia. That's ahead of the season starting on October the 10th.